Pelicans are a team that annoys me because of their on-the-court performances. I mean, this is a team that if games ended three minutes earlier than they do, if they ended at the 45th minute mark instead of the 48th minute mark, they would be about 10 games above 500. That is not a joke. They have genuinely blown that many games. They would be like the fifth seed in the West instead of the 11th if games ended just three minutes early. It's ridiculous. So those on-the-court performances annoy me. Also, the fact that Stan Van Gundy is the coach. There's a few things that annoy me about the New Orleans Pelicans. But the reason I actually get annoyed is because the fact that I like some of the players on the team. And one of those players is Lonzo Ball. I was never a huge Lonzo fan coming out of high school, coming out of college. But just because of the fact everyone was kind of writing him off and I thought he was a really solid player who's got better every single year, well, I grew to liking him and, well, he's a pretty damn good player who's been playing pretty damn well. But another reason why the Pelicans annoyed me, particularly during the trade period just a few months ago, was because of the fact this guy, Lonzo Ball, um, they wanted to trade him, or at least there was rumors that they were trying to trade him. They didn't have interest in re-signing him. They didn't want to keep him as part of their core, or at least they weren't sure of it. I don't care if they were 50%, oh, should we trade him? Should we not? No, you should be 100%, don't trade him. What are you thinking to trade this guy? This is someone who's a young point guard. He's on the trajectory to becoming an all-star level player. He plays defense more than anyone else on your team because no one on your team plays defense. He plays defense. He shoots better or just as good as anyone on your team. He's the best playmaker on your team. He's the best fit alongside your franchise player and the guy that you want to lead your franchise, Zion Williamson. He connects with him on lobs. He connects with him on three-point opportunities. He connects with him on pretty much everything. They're fantastic fits. He can can run your unit when Zion's off the floor. He can run it when Zion's on the floor. He can play off the ball. Yeah, this is a guy that's the perfect fit. Like, I could name ha a handful of players that would be a better fit alongside Zion Williamson than Lonzo Ball. And you are questioning whether you want to re-sign him? $20 million a year, is that too much? Pay the man. Pay the man the money. Just pay the man $20 million, whatever it takes to keep him in New Orleans. That's what frustrated me about the Pelicans just earlier. And we'll talk about Lonzo. And no, I'm not going to get into that conversation, you know, everyone calling him a bust. We're not going to do that. Let's not do that. They called him a bust. <laughs> Let's not do that. We've, we've been over that. That'd be petty to try and bring back that stuff like that. No, no, no. It's funny, but we've moved on. But we need to talk about why Lonzo Ball is the perfect fit for the Pelicans, and why they must re-sign him. Just don't trade him. This is my pitch to you guys. Now, before I do that, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I make content like this close to every single day, and doing so just really helps out how the video goes, so that would be much appreciated. Now, I've said it before, but I'll make note of it again, and it's the fact that Lonzo dealt with a lot of injuries early in his career it was a reason why his development was impeded. I mean, he didn't have a huge injury, which is kind of why people swept it under the radar a little bit. It's like, well, it's just kind of an injury here and there, but that can really affect how someone's momentum goes in his first few years, not being able to get on the court, not being able to work out in the offseason. This season, however, although he's missed some games during the regular season, he had an offseason to actually work on things that he wanted to improve, and well, he's He's done exactly that. He's worked on things he wanted to improve. You look at the improvement he's made over the first four years of his career, it's been pretty gradual. And this year, from a scoring perspective, it's been pretty significant. He's improved his three-point shooting every season, including this season. He's improved his scoring the last two years, with this being a clear career high in scoring. And just his consistency as a scoring is so much more evident. I mean, he scored in double digits in about 80% of the games. That's up 20% from last season. In terms of games, in which he scored 20 or more, as opposed to 11% last season, it's up to 22% this season. There's big differences that he's made in his scoring this year, and a lot of that comes down to the fact that he's been able to stay healthy. Although he's missed some games this season, he had a good offseason to work on his shooting, and he worked on exactly that, because you look at his scoring, and you look at how he improved those things, he's improved his free throw shooting drastically. That was something that was seen as a huge weakness. It's drastically improved. He's finishing better at the rim, although he still doesn't take a lot of shots. I mean, he doesn't really need to take a ton of shots at the rim when you score the second most points in the paint in the league as a team. When Zion Williamson is on your team, the best paint player in the NBA from a scoring perspective, you've got guys 
that can get it done inside. Just the fact that he's willing to attack the rim a bit more aggressively nowadays. He'll get downhill and he doesn't really hesitate as much. It also comes down to the fact that he's shooting well at the free throw line as well. So he doesn't need to be as kind of fearful of if he gets to the line, will he miss it? Will he not? No, he's comfortable shooting the ball. He's also shooting better from the mid-range spot. He's above 40% as opposed to below 30% last season. He's made a jump in pretty much every aspect possible from a shooting perspective and this comes down to the fact that he's been willing to work on it and he's had an opportunity to work on it. So when you look at that kind of trajectory, you look at someone that's improved his shooting, he's improved his scoring defensively, he's been good, he's been getting better I'd say the last few years, probably similar but he's been good defensively. This is someone that's improved. Why would you not want to take a chance on him? His injuries might be a concern. That's the only concern I have over signing him to a long-term contract to pair with Zion Williamson, to pair with Brandon Ingram. This is someone that complements your franchise player. This is someone that gets better every single year and has clearly made his goal to work on his shooting and has now become one of the better shooters in the NBA. He's a legitimate shooter who can go off for eight threes on any given night. He can go off for five threes, six threes. Like he's someone that's going to give you spacing every single night. His playmaking is still elite. He can still get out in transition. This is Lonzo Ball. He's a fantastic player and he's consistently getting better. But just to emphasize why the Pelicans need to keep him, this is my pitch to New Orleans, David Griffin, Stan Van Gundy, whoever's watching this video, neither of you are, but you get the point. This is my pitch. What else needs to be said apart from obviously your franchise is around Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram is there as well, but you look at who is paired with Zion, it's Lonzo. Like he is the perfect fit. He throws perfect alley-oops. He can play off ball. He can play on ball. He doesn't have an ego. He plays defense. He shoots the ball. He's improved every aspect of his game. He's young as well. He's on the same trajectory. He's only asking for 20 million, only asking for 20 million, still quite a lot, but he's definitely worth that. That's what he was asking for last time I checked. He's definitely worth that amount of money. If he is to stay healthy, when you look at some of the other point guards, some of the other young players in the league getting paid a boatload for someone who could be a potential all-star, you want to trade this guy? Who are you getting that's a better offer? Who are you getting that's a better option than Lonzo Ball? Who? Like, I don't understand. I mean, it's probably not going to happen anymore, but I just want to make it very clear that the New Orleans Pelicans need to keep Lonzo Ball. It's not, oh, it'd be nice if they kept Lonzo. No, they need to. You're not getting someone that's a better fit for Zion. You're not getting someone that's a better fit for your team. You're not getting someone that's just better, full stop, or younger. Like, it's not going to happen. Keep a hold of him. Just do it. He might be the second most valuable player on this team, in my opinion. Again, it's my opinion. If you're offended by that, if you think Brandon Ingram's more valuable, that's fine. Like, they're very good players. I just think Lonzo Ball, in terms of how he compliments Zion Williamson, in terms of what he does from a playmaking aspect, from a defensive aspect, and from a shooting aspect, the three things that the Pelicans lack the most, Lonzo does the best. Brandon Ingram's a great shooter as well, also a good playmaker, and in theory is a good defender, isn't quite as active as Lonzo, isn't quite as always engaged as Lonzo. But Lonzo does all of those things fantastically, and that's what the Pelicans need the most. Just looking at the Pelicans, this is a team that has been in a winning position so often throughout the season, so often, and this is with how many mistakes, how many holes in their roster, like Eric Bledsoe? Eric Bledsoe's on their team, like, say less. This roster is just not very good right now, but they've been in a winning position consistently because they've got enough talent out of their big guns. They've got talent. They've also got some young guys coming through, but you want to build with this core and this trio doesn't need to be split up. And I just wanted to make a video to make that very clear because you look at the path Lonzo has gone on and I just don't see a world in which he doesn't get even better than he is right now. He's already a great shooter. He's already a great playmaker. He's already a good defender. Why doesn't he get better than that? Why doesn't he become one of the best shooters in the league? Like looking at his trajectory, it's possible. Why doesn't he become a more consistent mid-range shooter where he's taking two or three a game and he's giving you 16 to 17 points a game, plus can run the offense, plus can play off ball, plus can be the best guard defender on the floor at any time. That's the kind of guy you've got right now and you want to like maybe give him up? You want to potentially give him up? I just don't quite understand it. So you should not be giving up Lonzo Ball. In terms of the Pelicans this season, right now looking ahead to the future, they've still got a chance to make the play-in game. They've still got a chance to make the play-in game. I think this season is the season in which you get out all of the mistakes and there's been a lot. 
there has been a lot of mistakes. Like, I mean, countless mistakes. Next year, if you don't make the playoffs, has to be some drastic moves made. I think they need to make some moves. Anyway, Eric Bledsoe is still a starting player on this team. Like, say less. It took them that long to realize, oh, give the keys to Lonzo and Zion instead of Eric Bledsoe. So that kind of gives me a little bit of concern over Stan Van Gundy that he didn't initially give the keys over to Lonzo and Zion and gave it to Eric Bledsoe, kind of in a way. Don't do that. Make sure those guys have the keys. And well, the Pelicans should be good going forward. In terms of Lonzo Ball, this is why I think the Pelicans just have to keep him. Improved every year, a better shooter, just a fantastic fit alongside Zion, alongside Brandon Ingram. Just keep him, Pelicans. Just do it, okay? Anyways, that's the video. <laughs> Other than that, have a good day. I'll catch you next time. Bye.